from this subject good ground that others fell on good ground and brought forth good ground amen everybody say good ground father bless us now that we preach the truth with power and with sound doctrine may we win the soul that's near as hell Bless us, O oh God, today in Jesus' name. Amen. Good ground. This message today is about taking ownership. Amen. This message is, I'm going to preach this, um, but it, you, will, you have to receive that it's going to come from uh, a different angle. And, and, I, and I want you to, to, to hear me today. Today's message is similar, has a similar or, origin uh, as last Thursday night's message. It has the same similar origin, as a matter of fact. Last Thursday night's message was entitled, Sanctify the Lord God in Your Hearts. Taken from 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15, the A clause literally says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. That is, to set Jesus Christ apart in your heart, to reverence the Lord, to let your love for him dominate every area of your life. Love him above possessions, to love him above occupation, and love him above marriage, love him above everything and everyone that is in your life. Build, a, provide a space in your heart that no one can occupy but the Lord. The Bible says that we're to love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Amen. With all thy strength. Then love our neighbor as ourselves. You, you love God with a love that you don't have for anyone or anything else, right. then you love your neighbor as a fellow human being. Right. Amen. There is the vertical love that we have for God, then the horizontal love that we have for each other. And you don't love anyone the way that you love the Lord. That is sanctifying the Lord in your heart. The, in Peter's letter, he's saying, instead of being afraid of the world, and how they can harm you and the things that can happen. He says, instead, sanctify the Lord in your heart. The origin of last Thursday's teaching actually came from last Sunday's message. Follow me now. The message was entitled, Things That Accompany Salvation. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 9 uh, says, But beloved... We are persuaded of better things of you. Things that accompany salvation. And the thrust of last Sunday's message, things that accompany salvation, is that you not, after having tasted of the good word of God and tasted of the powers of the world to come and having been once enlightened, that you not go that far in God and then turn around and fall away. Amen. That you not allow yourself to remain a immature Christian, but you grow in Christ. But even after growing and having experienced Christ, that you don't grow and experience him and then from that lofty place turn away because the Bible says something that we don't want to preach today. The Bible says when people do that, to renew them again unto repentance, the scripture says it's impossible to do that. Hebrews chapter 6. It's not saying that God can't 
But it is saying that you can. What are you going to tell them? If you, if you try to quote a scripture, they can finish it before you start. You try to tell them, God bless you, sir. What the Bible says, they may say, well, I know what the scripture says. See, once you grow in the Lord and go deep in the Lord, you don't grow in the Lord and then turn back from him. Don't do that. You know what you do? You sanctify the Lord in your heart to guard against, praise the Lord, growing in Christ and then falling away. I'm determined that I'm not going to fall away. Amen. So instead of leaving him, I am actively sanctifying him in my heart, giving him a greater a greater space in my heart. Are you following me? So from Hebrews chapter 6, we talked about sanctifying the Lord. There's another passage in Hebrews 6 that gives birth to this message. And uh, the, the, the passage is Hebrews chapter 6, verse 7 through 8. And this will all make sense to you in just a few moments. Hebrews 6 Verse 7 and 8 says, For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh often upon it and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed receiveth blessings from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected. And is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. What is the point of this? The point is that when the ground, after having been cultivated by the farmer and given rain from God above, brings forth properly, that ground receives blessings from the Lord. That ground has the Blessings of God because it, the ground, did what was reasonable. If you break up the fallow ground, get the, the, uh, cultivate the soil and get everything out of it that shouldn't be there and put some, uh, some uh, fertilizer in it and then plant seeds and then God sends the rain, it has everything that it needs to bring forth. You have reasons to expect a bumper crop because all of those things were done. You've cultivated it. You've made it right. And now the only thing you got to do now is just wait. Between the rain, the dew, the sunshine, the weather, the seasons, then all of a sudden the blade comes up and after a while you have crops. And when you go out there and it works the way that it is, it is supposed to, you give that garden a, a, a good old, a good old attaboy. So that's what I was expecting. Way to go. It did what it was supposed to do. Amen. It's like a coach who coaches his team, teach them the plays, show them what to do, gets them in shape prepares them. Now it's game time. The one thing the coach can't do is the coach can't play. The coach stands on the sidelines now and watch and watches and, 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 and sends in plays and stratagems for his students, for his uh, players to perform. When they perform the way that they've been trained, the coach is glad. The coach says, that's, a, that's the way it's supposed to be done. Great job. And all, he's just excited. But by the same token, verse 8 teaches in Hebrews chapter 6, but when you get the same advantages that you had in verse 7, that is, the ground is cultivated. The rain has fallen. Everything is done. You've, everything has been planted in the ground. But if after all, all of that preparation, what comes up are briars and thorns, well, you don't celebrate that. 
you know, you done trained them, show them the plays, and then they get out there and perform like they hadn't been trained. They, when they go back to the sideline, they try to dodge the coach, the coach because they're afraid he may knock their heads off because they have been trained. So it is reasonable to expect them to perform a certain way. Given the advantages of verse 7, if in verse 8 the ground fails to produce, that ground loses its value. The land that produces nothing but weeds faces nothing but fire. That land is rejected and it is nigh to cursing. Its future isn't good and the only thing that it can look forward to is to be burned off. Why? Because the land, now hear me, was given everything that it needed to produce, but it still failed to produce. The only thing that that land has to look forward to is fire. And fire uh, is a type here for judgment. The issue today is the ground, not the seed, not the rain, but the ground. Not the seed, not the rain, but the ground. The issue here is the pupil, not the school, not the teacher, not the lesson but the pupil. Praise the Lord. Not whether or not uh, they had breakfast. The child is full. Mom and dad have done their job. Got them up, either took them to school or they caught the bus. Everything that is conducive for learning is in place. At that point, it's on the student. For the student to perform. And the thing that determines the performance of the student is whether or not that student is good ground. I need you to hear me today because I'm throwing, God said, throw the ball back at him. Preach, preacher, you say, God says, listen, student. Preach, man of God. God throws it back. Say, say obey what is taught. Bless me, we say to God. He throws back at us. Obey me. I'm, just, I'm talking about good ground. Praise the Lord. It, it, it becomes a matter. And what determines the, the, whether or not the ground is good is uh, what it produces. Praise the Lord. It's fruit. I'm not getting any amens today. <laughs> Jesus said this uh, about uh, ground and fruit. In Matthew's gospel, chapter 7. Praise the Lord. He has something to say on this subject. The seventh chapter of uh, St. Matthew and We'll start reading at the 15th verse. He says, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. That is, they are masquerading. They pretend to be someone uh, whom they're not. Uh, they have on sheep's clothing, but inwardly are raving wolves. That is, they are vicious uh, animals, raving wolves. You shall, he says, you shall know them by their fruits. Do you see that? That is by their character, by their behavior, and by their doctrine. He asks the question, do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of, of thistles? Do you go to a grape vine and when you do you go to a thorn bush to gather grapes? Of course you don't. Do you, would you go to a, 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 uh, 
a, a bush that produces thistles and expect to get figs? No, you will know who and what they are by what they produce. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth uh, good fruit, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruit, you shall know them. By your character, by your behavior, by your doctrine. Notice Jesus didn't say, uh, he didn't speak to where the tree was planted. He didn't speak to the weather. He didn't speak to uh, the job of the horticulturalist. He just talked about fruit. What is produce? It's a, it becomes, my brothers and sisters, a matter of production. In Hebrews chapter 8, uh, chapter 6 and verse 8, the Hebrews writer had Genesis chapter 3, verse 17 through 18 in mind, where God said, cursed is the ground. He was talking to Adam after the fall. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herbs of the field. That is, he cursed it. He cursed it and said it, wouldn't bring, it would not bring forth properly. In verse 7 of Hebrews chapter 6, the writer had Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31 in mind, where the Bible says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. It received a blessing. From this passage, we get today's message, good ground. From this passage, the question comes, uh, uh, is the question I'm asking you is, what kind of ground are you? What does your reactions to what has been taught say about the kind of ground you are? <clears throat> what does your response to the gospel that you've heard preached here at the church say about the kind of person you are. Amen. Because how you respond to the gospel, how you respond to what is taught, tells the story. Oh, you're quiet in here today. I want you to hear this. It's See, many times we will say it's the preacher. And there are, there, are, there are cases where that is true. But many times God is saying, it's the ground. It's the person. See, it's the person. It's the person. You don't want, you don't want to hear the gospel. Then the problem is not the gospel. It's the person. I, I love something that my daughter said the other day when we were uh, at uh, Raleigh Hill Baptist Church at the symposium and she was preaching on, uh, speaking on preaching to millennials, and she began to talk about the gospel. And she said, the first thing I want to say about the gospel is, there's nothing wrong with the gospel. There's nothing wrong with the Bible. We don't need to change the gospel. The only problem with the gospel is, we need to preach it. And some of us sometimes treat the gospel as though the gospel is somehow deficient. As though the word of God somehow needs help. No, there's nothing wrong with the gospel. There's nothing wrong with the Christian doctrine. The doctrine of Christianity is not too, is not overly judgmental. It is not homophobic. It is not mean. It is not cruel. The doctrine of the gospel is right. It's, it's, not, it's, not, the, it's not the gospel. It's, it's not the church. It's not the preaching that is in error. 
it is your heart. I was told before I got a chance to go to Memphis, Tennessee, to the National Convocation of the Church of God in Christ, as a young man, I heard my pastor talk about Memphis and the saints in Memphis. And what I heard him say was so wonderful that I wanted to go to Memphis for myself. And then I heard others in sidebar conversations talk about Memphis. And they talked about, uh, well, when the pastor talked about it, he talked about the glory of God, the blessings of God, how God moved into service, what it was like to see the saints and all that. Well, in the sidebar conversations, I heard some of the other people talk about it. And they said, oh, you go there and it's just a fashion show. And everybody's trying to outdress everyone else. So I went. There's two different descriptions of the same place. I went to Memphis. And so when I went there, I saw people from all over the country, from all over the world, worshiping in Memphis. I went to the Cook Convention Center and uh, it, it, it seated over 20,000. I thought it was 100,000 in there. And I've never been in a place where all that many people Begin to worship God at the same time. The house was literally rocking. We were in the stands and the stands were shaking as the saints worshiped God. The national choir sang and the glory came down. The preacher preached and the gospel was preached. Never seen so many black folk dressed up and looking nice. Praise God. Amen. And out there on the grounds, all them Lincolns and Cadillacs. And, you know, I didn't know they were rented. <laughs> oh, all of these, everybody looking so good. And I'll never forget, I'll never forget the day that I was standing there and this big car pulls up. And I noticed everybody gravitating, how... You know, I've never seen this. I'm from Rockingham, North Carolina, and I'm, uh, um, uh, uh, I'm looking at this, and I said to myself, I said to myself, this must be then the leader pulling up. And this guy, it's got, the, it's got the top. This got to be the white man because I've never seen anybody respond like that from where I came from to a black man. So I'm standing at a distance and I'm watching this and I see as the man steps out of the car, I see his left foot step out of the car, but he had, of course, with his pants and his socks and his shoes, I couldn't see his skin. And then as he stepped out, there stood Bishop J.O. Patterson, a man of God, of color, whom God had elevated and put an anointing on him that was so great that he caused people to gravitate around him like that. Then I began to understand a little bit of the doctrine of the ground. Whether or not it's good ground, or not, because depending upon the person, depends on what's in your heart, you would see a fashion show. Depend on your heart. You see men worshiping men, depending on your heart. But for me, I saw the glory of God. I saw something that changed me, that had a greater effect on me than any football game, any baseball game, any basketball game, any movie. I'd never seen anything like that. And here I stand 40 some odd years later, still going to the national conventions every year, and it still moves me to see the people. 
Oh, if you go, everybody's just trying to outdo everybody. Everybody's just trying to uh, uh, outdress everybody. It's all just competition. Well, now, 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 it may be that. Or it could be there's something wrong with you. It, it could be the problem is your sight. Oh, look at that person. They're standing to give. They're just giving to be seen. They could be. I don't know. But it could be that you're judging them. And what we're hearing from you is resentment in you because you can't do what they're doing. So you assign something negative. See, there, you, you, you're saying that their motives are negative, but, but they're not saying anything about you. It depends on the, on the ground. It depends on the ground. Praise the Lord. See, some of you, when you see the glory move and the power of God, you sit back and call yourself saved and you're unmoved. And you know what? It may very well be that you feel nothing. But, it ain't, but it's not because it's not real. It's not because it's not God. It may not even appeal to you, but it's not because it's something wrong with what God is doing. It depends on the ground. I'm almost through. Can I get a witness? I'm almost uh, where I'm headed. See, because one thing I want to say in this message of the ground, and I, I want to make a declaration. Praise the Lord, and, and, uh, and, and, and I mean it. If you attend this church and you leave Jesus and become a Muslim, a Buddhist, an atheist, a secularist, if you leave Jesus, praise the Lord for the Masons, if you leave Jesus for the world, if you leave Jesus for these things, it's not because you hadn't been taught. It's not because it hadn't been talked about. Praise the Lord. Now, depending on your heart, that determines whether or not the word fell on good ground or stony ground. That depends on you. Depends on the condition you were in when you came. And the condition you insist upon staying in as the word is preached. Paul said the same thing. He said, oh, foolish Galatians. I'm on my, I'm on my way. Galatians 3 and 1. Oh, foolish Galatians who have bewitched you. Who put a spell on you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. He, the key here is before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently set forth. What is he saying? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was so graphically presented as crucified before you. I taught you, Paul says, how Jesus died for you. I laid it out to you. Paul's argument was that the gospel has been made clear to you. He says, one writer says, Paul said, it's like I posted it on a bulletin board. I wrote it on boxcar letters. I put it up like a placard before you. I taught you all that Jesus did for you and I died on the cross and rose again I want to know how in the world after having been taught what I taught you how could somebody come in and put a spell on you Paul said the problem must be that you're a fool you're the fool Galatian foolish Galatian how is it that you can come up in holiness. I feel my help here. 
How can you come up in holiness and then turn around and go sissy? How can you come up in holiness and then try to uh, defend abortion? How are you going to come up in holiness and backslide and leave the law? How? The problem, the problem, the problem is not the gospel. It's not the word of God. It's not the church. It's the ground. High five somebody, low five, or slap them and ask them, what kind of ground are you? <laughs> mm. Paul says, call them foolish Galatians. That is one who is able to think, but you, you refuse to use your powers of perception. My God, you, 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 you lack the intelligence. You lack, you lack common sense well, let me tell you something there are some things that you have to have if you're going to make it in Christ I've determined that some are just losers I don't know what you do with that I don't know what you can do with that because you know what you can't do mother you can't live it for them you, you, you coach you a coach by trade where's coach Mebbin in here if we got coaches by trade you can teach it but you can't go out there in the game and play it. Am I right? You played when you were a student. But as a coach, you can teach them until you turn blue in the face. But you have to watch them to see if they will perform that which has been taught. Can I get a witness? The same is true with the word of God. It depends on the ground. You know, our text is an interesting one because it shows where Jesus made a startling change in his ministry. From Matthew's gospel, chapter 13 on down, it didn't matter anymore whether you were a Jew or a Gentile. All that mattered was your willingness to hear the word. You know, what happened was the Jews rejected Jesus one time too many. And while Jesus was preaching one day, the Bible says, and we love her, we love her. Catholics, we don't love her like you do, but we love her. We don't think she's the mother of God and, and that she's divine because she's not. And she was not sinless. Matter of fact, I'll show you where she did sin. Mary got beside herself. We love her. Praise the Lord. We love her. But she got off. Don't you talk about Mary. She got off. She got beside herself one day. And our, uh, Jesus was preaching. Where's that at, preacher? In chapter 12. Matthew, you in chapter 13, go to chapter 12, verse 46. You have, to, you have to look far. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, out of place. Jesus was preaching. You should have been in there. Should have been in there. Jesus preaching. It should have been in there. Amen. Stood without. Desiring to speak to him. She's outside telling them, go in there and tell Jesus. I said, come here. We, we, want, we, want, we, want, I need, we need to see him. Now, he's preaching. House full of folk. Sends them in there and uh, says, uh, go tell him that we need to see him. There's always a dummy. Somewhere, the Bible says in verse 47, then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brothers stand outside desiring to speak with thee. I've often wondered, what did they want? You expect Jesus to cut his sermon short. What did you want? And uh, notice, notice Jesus' response. This is how you know they were wrong. When they came to him, he didn't say, Okay, y'all, I got to go see what mommy wants. He said, who is my mother? 
Bible tells you right there. It tells you right there. If you, if you understand how to read the Bible, tell you right there, she was off. She was out of place. Who is my mother? Uh, who is, who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hands toward his disciples and said, he pointed at everybody, says, uh, and said, behold, my mother and my brethren. Notice in your Bible, there's an exclamation point there. He was saying to those who were there, you're my mother. You're my brothers. Now, you know Jesus loved Mary, but she's out of order. See, when, when ministering, there's nothing more powerful than preaching and, and carrying on the work of the Lord. And uh, it says, and notice what he says, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother, my sister, or my mother. He says, from here on out, whoever obeys God, that person is my mother, my sisters, and my brothers. And, and the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat, and uh, uh, he didn't go out when they called for him. He left later on, and as a matter of fact, he never met with them. And when he went out and sat down, a great multitude followed him, and then he began to teach. It was on the heels of him declaring that the relationships no longer are by blood, but the relationships are spiritual. By declaring ah, spiritual relationships, that lets you know this is why he began to talk about sowing in Saul. Amen. Behold, a certain sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, he sowed the seeds to everywhere, everywhere. But some seeds fell by the wayside. And those seeds that fell by the wayside came and they were devoured up. The people are listening to him. Jesus, the great preacher, said, some seed fell on stony places. Can I get a witness? And there they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, but because they had not much deepness of earth, Lord have mercy, and when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had not had no root, they withered away. Mm -hmm. And then, then he said, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. And others fell into good ground. And the good ground brought forth fruit some 100 fold, some 60 and some 30. And then he said, now, uh, he who hath ears to hear, let him hear. He threw it out there and said, I really don't want to explain this. You got to get it on your own. Oh, Lord. And then the Bible teaches that later on that day, it says, when his disciples came, and they said unto him, why do you speak in parables? And this is deep, saints. You need to get this. And he answered and said unto them, because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It is given to the believing crowd to know the mysteries of the kingdom of the kingdom of heaven but unto them it is not given see it's revealed to the saved folk but it's but to the unbelieving crowd it is not given unto them he said whosoever hath to him it shall be given this don't even seem fair but this ought to shape your attitude if while you hear the gospel being preached, you sit there and reject it, and then God won't give you what he planned to give you in the first place. But if when you hear the word preached, you then begin to receive it, then God gives you more, hallelujah, and he reveals it to you. So for whosoever hath, to him it shall be given. And he that hath, and, and he shall have more in abundance. But whosoever hath not, 
For him it shall be taken away, even that which he hath. You better know that every time you hear the word of God, you're hearing something worth understanding. You're hearing something worth you going the extra mile of the way to try and receive. This is why it's so easy for a hard-hearted sinner to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and then walk out and having felt nothing. That's because they fought it every step of the way. And Jesus said, if you don't have it, then what you don't have, so it shall be taken from you, even that little bit that you have. But he that hath, he that comes with a mind to try to learn something, the Bible says it shall be given to them. It says that, that it might be fulfilled. The prophecy of Isaiah saying, by hearing you shall hear and shall not understand and seeing you shall see and not perceive that is talking to the hard-hearted people he said for this people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts and should be converted and I should heal them. Bless, bless, but bless are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. I want to tell you something, saints. The Lord wants you to be saved. The Lord wants you to be delivered, but he wants you to be delivered if you want to be delivered. He wants you to know it if you want to know it. Jesus said if you go to a city and you preach to those people and they don't receive the word of God. Jesus said, Jesus didn't, stay, didn't say stay there for 50 years and only 10 people come to hear you. Jesus said no, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them and leave that city. Many preachers have wrecked their careers trying to preach to people who just don't want it. If they just don't want it, they just won't get it. If they just don't want it, they won't understand because God himself when he see that you don't want him, when he see that you don't want heaven, when he see that you don't want what Jesus did, then God himself will send the spirit of blindness and he'll move on to somebody who wants this thing. I don't know about you today, but I want this thing. I want to be saved. I want to know. I want to know more about Jesus. I want to be in church. I want to be holy. And I want to be real. Do I have anybody here who will say, Preacher, I want it. I want this. I want the Holy Ghost. I want to be baptized. I want to be strengthened. I don't want the Lord to take away my sight. But I want the Lord to let me see, help me understand these spiritual things. Good God Almighty, the world is creeping in on some of us because the truth is the world is what we want. And God knows your heart. You can fool your mama. You can fool your daddy. You can fool the preacher, but you can't fool God. Anytime you're dealing with somebody who just can't get delivered, they can't understand, they can't get through it, they can't get over it. The truth is, it's not that they can't, they're just not willing to let it go. But the day you are willing to let it go, God will deliver your soul. Do I have anybody here who struggled until you were ready to let it go? Didn't the Lord come in and deliver you? Lift your hands and say yeah. Yeah! 
Give him praises in the building, if you will. Oh, I told you this is hard to get coming from a different angle. Hallelujah. But the issue is, it's the soil. It's not the truth. It's the person. Hallelujah. If you're sitting there and you're unwilling to give him up, to give her up, to give it up, if you're unwilling to come out of sin, if you're unwilling to let go and let God, then you will never get what he has for you. The problem, it's not the gospel. The problem is the person. But if you're willing and you will tell the Lord, here, I am, here am I, Lord, let me be the clay and you be the potter. Work on me, Lord. Shake me, Lord. Bend me, Lord. Take away everything that needs to be taken and give me what I need. Lord, I'm willing. I want you to know that the power of God, the blessings of God, the anointing of God will fall on your life and you will see a glory like you've never seen before. Why don't you lift your hands and offer God a good ground praise. Say to him, Lord, I'm willing. Lord, here I am. Oh! Thank you. Thank you. Notice, the problem was never the sowers. The problem was never the seed. The problem was the ground. It says, he that heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catch away that which was sown in his heart. This is he. This is he that received seed by the wayside. The issue was not the seed. The issue was the he. Saints, when you hear the word, you got to reach out to understand it. Let the devil come and try to take that word out of your heart. You ought to tell the devil you'll never take what God has deposited in my heart. I'm going to keep that word and build on the word of God. Yeah, yes. He said in verse 20, he that heareth, he that receiveth seed in stony places, the same is he that receiveth, that heareth the word. And he gets happy when he hears the word. He shouts, he receives it, but he don't grow. He don't go home and study the Bible. Don't come to church on Thursday nights. Never come to prayer meeting. Never attends Bible study. Just a Sunday morning saint. Every now and again, they endure for a little while. But when trouble break out, when persecution break out, because of the word, they fall by the wayside. I'm here to tell you that trouble is coming. I'm here to tell you that persecution is coming. But if you get rooted and grounded in the Lord, no matter what happens, the winds can blow, the storm can rise, but the Lord, he is, he's a keeper. How many know that God is a keeper? Yeah! Oh! Lift your hands if you know and give him praise for his keeping power. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey Lord, you ought to tell somebody he's kept me down through the years. Every time the devil tried to stop me, every time 
He tried to hurt my feelings, break my heart, make me go back because I have roots, because I've been studying, because I read over there where he said the sun will not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. I read over there where he said, now unto him who is able to keep me from falling. I ride over there. Oh, now thanks be unto God who always calls us to triumph in Christ Jesus. I ran over there. I ran over there. I'm rooted and grounded in the Lord. Somebody praise him. Praise the Lord. Woo! I want to hear you give God a I'm rooted praise. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And he said he that receiveth seed, oh Lord, among the thorns. He it is that hear the word, but the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word. You get caught up in the world. You get caught up in yourself. You get caught up in your career. Church workers, don't get so caught up in church work. Hallelujah. Thank God for the security team. Thank God for the musicians. Thank God for the cameramen. Thank God for the sound techs. Thank God for the van drivers. Oh Lord. But don't get so caught up in the natural things that you don't take time to keep your soul strong. Some people, they spend the whole church service standing around in the hallway. They spend the whole service hiding, oh Lord, backstage somewhere. But you got to make sure you get this thing down in your heart. Get it for yourself, yeah! For myself, lift your hands and tell God thank you. Lift your hands and tell God thank you. You can't get so caught up. You can't get so caught up in this world, in this world, in this life, the cares of this world, children, bills, college. You know what I'm talking about. The cares of this world, careers. The cares of this world, they'll choke, they'll choke, they'll choke the anointing, they'll choke God out of you, they'll choke the life out of you. You got to let that stuff go, you got to put it in God's hands, and that way, hallelujah, you won't be deceived. And then there is the idea. Oh, Lord. Mm. I I don't know how. I don't know if I'm preaching good or not. Oh, Lord. Only thing I know is it depends on the ear of the listener and the heart of the person. He said, he that receives seed, oh, Lord, on good ground is the person that hear the word and understands it and they puts it to work. They take the Bible home and study the scriptures. They take the sermon and study the sermon. When the word is preached, they grab hold to it. They don't fight it. They don't sit there doing the whole sermon and contradict it. They take it. They take it in. Okay, Lord, this is what pastor preached this week. Well, this is what I'm going home. 
and I'm going to study this. Let me see what you got to say to me. I have my own individual Bible study, but this is the word that you've given. So God, now I want this word because I want to apply it to every area and every aspect of my life because you see, I want to bring forth. I want to, I want to bring forth. And the only thing that proves my authenticity, the only thing that proves what kind of ground I am, what kind of believer I am, what kind of person I am is what I do with what has been sown in my heart. What I do with it. What I do with it. The changes that it produces in me. The righteousness that it wrought in me. Notice he puts the ownership back on the listener. Not on the seed so. The preacher, we can kill ourselves thinking, if I just preach a little harder, maybe they'll get saved. No, you preach hard enough. Right. But if their heart is not right, you can preach as hard as you want to. They'll bury you and say, next. And they still won't do right. There are, there are people who've been hanging around the church all their life and still won't do right. Always, always in and out. Never, never catch on. Always got to call you and see if you're going to come to church. Always got to reach. It's always something. The problem is that individual. <laughs> then there are those who don't need anything but the word of God. Give me a sermon and a song. And give me my Bible. I can make it. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. I'm good to go. Others need oh so much. Why? Why is it so hard for you to understand spiritual things? Why is it so hard for you to live right? Why is it so hard, man, for you to be straight? Why is it so hard, girl, for you to be, 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 be holy? Why? Well, you know, I just haven't never heard, I I've just haven't heard anybody preach it where I, I could just understand it. You know, I, you go to upper room and they're so judgmental and, and wouldn't, he's so hard, it hurts my feelings so I can't take it there. And I go to the first church of the fridge there and they're so light, oh, there's no conviction there. And you know, um, uh, my, my parents, they don't understand me. And all, you know what the problem is? It's you. Yeah. It's your heart. It's you. You don't want to do right. You don't want to do right. You know what Jesus said you do with them? Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Say, well, now who are you to judge? I'm not judging. Have you paid attention? I just read what, the, what happened with good ground. Good ground bring forth 100, 60, and 34. Good ground people grow. Grow. Good ground people eventually catch on. Good ground people grab, eventually gravitate. Some of, these, some of these people, let me tell you something. You know what you have to learn to do as a pastor with some? You have to learn, and I've had to do this, to just cut, bring your expectations down to zero. Wow. Then if you see them, you're glad to see them. If you don't, you don't. But you can't expect anything because they've proven over the years that they just ain't gonna come up. So why are you gonna set yourself up to be disappointed every Sunday? No, you know what you do? In your heart, you have to let him go. So that you can live. Oh, my pastor, he's up praying all night for my soul. I ain't gonna tell you, no, I'm not, no. no. I, 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 ain't gonna, I ain't gonna pretend that's the case. I, Cause I got to sleep, I got to live, I got to sleep. Man, don't, uh, look, when you're asleep and your body recovers, your mind gets clear, your, your cells recover, you reset. Amen. Amen. Why are you going to do all that for people who don't want to do right? Because it sure won't bring them around. Parents have learned it. With children who won't do right, just won't do right, and you try every trick in the book and the child just won't do. After a while, after you spend all your best days, it dawns on you. It's up to them. But you ain't got no time left. You're gray. Your best days are gone. And you spent the, the times, your, your, the, the times of your energy, times when you could have been doing some things. 
trying to get someone who refused to see to see. And now you learn that you were going against divine principles. Did did y'all see me read to you what Jesus said? To him that hath, it shall be given. To him that hath not, it shall be taken away. Even that which you have. The context there is to the person who's willing to learn, I'll teach him more. But the person who don't want to know about me, I'll not only will I not show them, but I'll take away what little they do know. Why? Why? Because Jesus knows the value of this. Jesus knows that when, when if you get saved and get into the kingdom, I, I, I'm not worried about making no uh, NFL Hall of Fame, uh, NBA Hall of Fame, or getting an Oscar. The Bible knows if you, if you can just get in, the, in, in this thing and get to heaven, You're talking about having won. You, you, you're talking about, you're talking about. And you're talking about a clear mind after you get saved. And then the Lord began to reveal his word. And, the, and you know what? It's like, it's like the heavens open up. He said, you know what? I like what you did with what I showed you the other day. You know what I'm going to reward you with? I'm going to show you more. And I'll watch what you do with the more. If you do right with the more, I'll show you more. You do right with that, I'll show you more. But so, so he's paying attention, watching us to determine what we do, what are we doing with what we know. So then, how can they hear without a preacher, right? How can they preach except they be sent? But when they preach, you got to hear. And in the Bible, Hearing never means just uh, listening with the ear. It is taking it in and acting on it. That's hearing. That's hearing. You didn't hear it if you heard it and didn't act on it. As far as God is concerned, you didn't hear it. You have to hear it and act on it to hear it. And if you act on this, he'll show you more. And he'll show you more. And he'll show you more. And, you show you more. and, and over time, your life will just bring forth your children, your, 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 your health, the blessings, the legacy that you will leave, the things that you will do, the kind of person you will become. Glory to God. The people you will influence. Generations to come. Your children and children's children. God does all kinds of things for people who will be good ground. What qualifies is what you do. What determines who's good ground is what you do with what you have heard. If what you're hearing doesn't produce anything, but you just fall for the same tricks, the same trap, the same everything, the same time, the same, the same, the same, then that means you're not good ground. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to join another church. It necessarily means you're not good ground. I'm going to pray now. Watch me make you mad. Everybody's still pushing all these changes that need to take place so black people can do better in this country. We don't need to change anything else. You know what we need to do? We need to operate on, what, on the changes. We need, we need to li walk in the changes. We have free access. You can work anywhere. You can even be president of the United States. Now, now think about it now. You, you can astronauts. Go all out in the space, live in any neighborhood you want to, turn on, turn on the television, we're on TV and commercials, turn on sports, you can't, uh, everywhere. And you can't make it. And we got to go and petition the government and, and ask for what more? What 
what are we doing with what we have? Now, if they, if they bless you to where you can go to school, and then you go, but you don't learn, then you graduate a dummy, okay? Because you didn't learn anything because you decided not to. Now, you can't blame society for that. You did that. You did that. Well, what can they do to help me? Nothing. What should be done? Nothing. Well, what am I going to do? Go back to school. Go to night school. Go to day school. Take something online. Learn what you, learn what you should have learned. And you know what will happen? The doors will open. And the blessings will come. Can I get a witness? Good ground today. Good ground. Good ground.